Welcome everybody. This is mindful weights for arms, legs, and everything else. <laughs> so how's that for a title? Yes, um, it's full body. So there's, we're going to leave no stone unturned. We're also going to look at this from an internal perspective, a heart perspective, a mental perspective, emotional. Um, I really love to look at these workouts as more than just the physical. So grab some weights. Um, if you have a variety, that's great. If you only have one set, that's great. Maybe sometimes you'll only use one if two is too much. You can also fill up some uh, reusable water bottles with um, with it that have a larger lid, like say um, a workout water bottle or something like that. If it's plastic, you can fill it up with rocks, then sand, then water, and you can make your own weights. So please come on and join me. First, please subscribe. This is, a, I'll trade you a free video for a subscribe. And if you find value to this video, please do like and leave me a comment. Come and join me on your mat. All right, so let's just go ahead and circle around and get a little bit of blood flow going so that we are not cold going right into this as far as the joints and the muscles and go in the opposite direction here, bringing a little blood flow. So as always, these mindful weights and things that I do have some yoga and some stretching involved in them too. Cross your legs in the opposite direction and circle around one way. And if you need to sit up on something, feel free to do that. And the other way. So we cross our legs in the opposite direction because we have a dominant hip, just like we have a dominant hand, dominant side of the brain, all of that. So we want to get flexibility and strength um, more evenly into both. So come to an all fours position. Tuck your toes under if you can, just to get a stretch across the arches of the feet, open that fascia and the toes. If not, tops of the feet is fine. And reach your hips back into a child's pose, kind of modified child's pose. And just start to reach one side of the rib cage down, then back up, and then the other side of the rib cage down. Because we wanna get open into those lats and a little bit opening um, under the shoulder blades, back and forth, breathing the whole time. And then come to all fours. If you want to pad your knees here, I do recommend if you have tender knee joints that you pad the knees, even if with even with a towel, that's fine. But I would recommend that you have one. And if you need to pause, grab something and come back, then go ahead and do that. And we'll just start to move our spine a little bit here, rounding deeply, opening between the shoulder blades, and then reversing that any amount, reaching the sternum forward, hips gently up. And then just one more time. This will help increase a little bit of that flexibility through the spine and the shoulders. And let's take it back to a downward dog and pedal it out. So opening the back of the legs and <clears throat> not trying to get the heels all the way down. They don't have to go all the way down, just to the point where you're getting a nice stretch. Reach the hips back, inhale and exhale slowly, lower the knees back down. And so we are going to do our first work with the weights on the knees. So again, grab a blanket, grab a towel, and set up for that. Whatever weight that you start with doesn't have to be the weight that you end with. So if you start with one and it doesn't work out, be willing to switch it out or even just use no weight at all. I'm gonna start here with some tens for this. And we'll go into an all fours position on those knees. Knees are roughly beneath the hips and you're holding on like a handle onto the weights here. Draw your organs toward your spine so you're not rounding and you're not collapsed, but nice and steady in between. And we'll just begin with a left arm row, lifting and lowering. And you're not trying to take this out to the side, but rather take your elbow straight to the side and back. And this will get into not only the triceps, that's kind of obvious, but also the back and the core. Breathing here, increasing some heat. And one more, hold, three, two, one, slowly put it down. You can keep your hands on the weights for your downward dog or move them to the sides for the downward dog. Deep breath in, soften the neck, sigh out. 
and lower the knees. Again, this is mindful. So we're moving through the transitions in a mindful way, in a nice controlled way. And then we'll do it on the other side, stabilizing through the core first, and now right arm, elbow comes up and back. You're not trying to take the torso to one side, but rather keep the torso parallel to the floor and let the lift be that elbow drawing up and back, keeping the inside of the upper arm near the side body. Continuing to breathe, and you can do this slow down, and of course you can switch the weight if you need a little less or even a little more. Two more. And weight down, hands on the weights or on the mat, downward facing dog, soften the neck, deep breath in, big sigh out. <sighs> Slowly lower to the knees. Walk your weights back and we'll come into the posterior chain a little bit differently. So we're kind of more in that upper back. Now we're gonna go glutes and hamstrings. Again, you can tuck your toes. I kind of recommend that. It helps stabilize the kneecap by um, kind of engaging the shin muscle. But if you need to be tops of the feet down, that's fine. Take your weights in front of you. Scoot up towards near the top of your blanket. And if you need to get that out of the way of your feet, you can. Underside of the forearms face you. And then without touching the weights together, because that makes it easier, <laughs> we're going to hinge the hips back draw the weights a little forward and diagonal, and then just draw back up until the weights are in front of the thighs and the hips are up. So hinging the hips back, that initiates the movement, and all the way back up. Now notice that I'm not bending my elbows. I'm just keeping the weights nice and long in that straight work, and it's a little diagonal in front. If you want to make this more challenging, take it more diagonally in front of you, not so close to the knees. That will increase what the glutes and hamstrings are having to do, and also probably through the core. Breathing the whole time, and using a little bit more focus so that the form is there. So instead of rushing, slow it down. When we rush, form kind of tends to go out the window. So ease it down a little slower. Two more. Whew. I'm pretending like this is just la-di-da, but no, my glutes are definitely feeling it. Hold. Oh, I didn't do our hold on the other side of our all fours. Three, two, one. Come on up. We'll do that hold real fast. Take yourself onto all fours. The right arm is gonna lift up, elbow up, back and in. Three, two, one, and down. Downward facing dog. And if I did it, who knows, we did two holds. Deep breath in, big sigh out. Leave your weights there. Walk back into a squat position. So you can take malasana where your knees and toes are pointed the same direction, whether they're forward or to the sides, whatever feels good. Or if you can't quite come into that, you can sit on some blocks or on um, pillows and just open the hips and let that low back neutralize and also open. Deep breath in, sigh out. This time you can move your blanket or towel out of the way. We're gonna walk forward into a plank pose, holding on to those weights, okay? In fact, we only need one weight. So move your one weight out of the way and put one weight right behind your right hand. Breathe here. This can be done on all fours. In fact, we can start on all fours. Take your left hand, grab the weight, move it over to the left, put your left hand down. Reach underneath you with your right hand, grab the weight, move it over to the right, put your right hand down. So that's the movement. You're just reaching underneath you, moving it to the side, down, to the side, and down. Now, if that's okay, let's come into that plank position and start to move that weight in the plank pose. To make this more challenging, take the ball joints of the feet to touching where you have to really try harder to not rock so much side to side. You will rock somewhat side to side. And if you wanna make it easier, feet wide or knees down. So for me, I'm feeling like, you know, let's increase that weight a little bit. We'll go ahead and do a 12 on this. So be willing 
to just make those changes. You check in, you say, hmm, what would work best in this moment? And then just make those changes. Five, four, three, stay with it, two, last one. Downward dog, soften that neck. So we always wanna check in to be overdo it in the jaw, the shoulders or the neck, let that go. Deep breath in, big sigh out. Walk your fingertips back towards your feet. So bend the knees as much as you need to to do that. Inhale, rise halfway up, get long in the spine. Roll the shoulder blades onto the back. Work that posterior chain, maybe bend the knees a lot. Exhale, fold any amount. It might be a little fold. And then chair pose <clears throat> with one of your weights. So choose any weight. You're only holding one and hold it in each hand. Bend the elbows and put the elbows on the front of the knees. Reach your hips further back so you feel that weight is in the heels, not just the ball joints of the feet. Breathe here. And then we'll do a lift and a lower of the weight. It's as if you have glued the elbows to the front of the knees and you're lifting and lowering. If that's too much, come up here and don't go so deep in the legs. So we've got everything but the kitchen sink that we're working today, as we said, arms, legs, and everything else. And if you need to decrease one area of work, do that. Never do more work at the expense of the breath. So you wanna have the breath the whole time. Draw your organs gently towards your spine. Two more. Last one. Good, hold it up. Okay, now either stay here with the elbows glued to the knees or to make it harder, take the elbows off the knees. Roll the elbows gently in so that the forearms are parallel. Three, two, one. You're gonna draw the weight down as you stand the torso up. All right, breathing here. Relax what can relax. So wherever you have a tendency to overwork, soften that out a little bit. And then you just need one weight again, but I would recommend that you use a heavier weight because the focus is on the legs now. So I'm gonna use this 15. And again, we'll hold it in that same manner. You could do this with no weight all the way up to whatever weight works. We're gonna do a separated leg position. So start in a lunge, but not a really wide lunge. And then draw your back knee, it doesn't matter which leg is forward, back knee down for a hover. Draw the elbows kind of underneath the sides of the weights, uh, the weight, and just a little hover and a movement up and down. If your weight is closer together, just make sure the elbows and the shoulders feel fine holding it. It doesn't really matter so much how you're holding it. Um, as much as that it just is safe for the joints and feels okay. Little lift, a little lower. Yes, this is a balance. <laughs> so you might find a focal point on the wall across the room or a couple feet in front of you. And we're gonna go to that burning zone. <laughs> Highway to the burning zone, is that the song? <laughs> no. <laughs> but we're there. Three, two, one, hold. And then we're gonna step forward into a chair pose. So lean your weight forward, torso forward, draw the organs towards the spine, and go into a chair pose with the feet at least hips distance apart. Breathing here. If you can, reach your weight straight forward. If you can't, hold it at an angle about 90 degrees. Three, two, one. Weight goes all the way up, legs straighten. Breathe. And then go ahead and take a moment, bring the weight back in front of you, and take the other position with the feet. So whichever leg you didn't have in front, that leg goes in front. You're not on a train, excuse me, you're not on a tight wire, you're on a train track. When you feel balanced in the legs and stable, find that little range of movement. It's only about three inches. And lift and lower the hips. So you don't want to be splaying your heel out to the side and your knee in. You want to really kind of be keeping the knees forward and the heels just behind those toes. <clears throat> Breath is number one. Let that be the leader of the entire parade. 
and we'll go into the burning zone. Because we've already worked the legs and your front leg is now your back leg, you'll probably feel burning faster than the first side. Three, two, one, hold. Stay with it. It's, you can do anything for a short period of time. Stay with it. And then hinge forward. Step into that wider footed chair about hips distance apart. Reach your weight forward or 90 degrees. Breathe. Weight goes up, legs go long. And release the weight very carefully all the way down. Be careful as you're even transitioning weight in and out of your hands. Don't just kind of be flippant about it. That's where people get hurt. And then we'll just shake everything out. And maybe take a little twisting, let the arms go. Go from being super structured to a little flowy. And send the head around. So we're aiming to keep the heart rate up so that we're in a little bit more of those um, calorie burning zones for longer periods of time. So we have rest, but we're not going down to all the way that decreased heart rate. Okay, so this one, we're gonna do a little bit of changing up. So I would say tens or less on this, and tens, tens are a lot, okay? So <clears throat> we're gonna turn into a bicep curl first. So the underside of the forearms forward and lifting and lowering. Okay, so there's a very slight, slight bend in my knees and I'm not going to hyperextend. And I'm also not gonna take my pelvis forward as I lift. So sometimes the body goes, oh, I'll help you. <laughs> so let's isolate it more in those biceps. Once you have that down, we'll do one of my favorite dual movements, which is the bicep curl to the shoulder press. So bicep curl, turn the underside of the forearms forward and press the weights up. Back down, turn, and all the way down. And just repeat that. Bicep curl, rotate the weights, shoulder press, back down, rotate the weights, and all the way down. Breathing here. If you want to work harder, you can turn one heel in and almost like you're doing a modified tree pose with this and work here. What does this do? I think you know. It changes the balance and the way you have to stabilize this. For those of you who are really, you know, gung-ho about working the balance, come to the calf. Woo! <laughs> and hold it there. Apparently I'm not very gung-ho about balance today. Rotating up. You think I'm gonna edit that out? No way. Because we're human, that's what it is, right? One more. And all the way down. Hang the weights down. Let that just kind of traction the shoulders down a little bit, soften the neck, breathe. other side. So we've already been, we've already done equal on both sides. So this time we're just shifting to our modified tree and you don't even have to do that. You can absolutely just keep the feet aligned on the ground. And if you have too much weight, change it. All right. I don't know how I feel about this side. <laughs> the first side didn't go so well. Maybe tree pose. And it's a little harder now because our arms are more fatigued. So finding that balance. And it's a tree pose with the calf, not the inner thigh. Working that balance. This is so good for building new pathways, new neuropathways in the brain, having to work balance and strength at the same time. One more. Yes. And all the way down. Hang the weights down. And deep breath in. And sigh out. Careful as you place your weights down. And I want you to go right down onto the ground with your knees and your hands. So again, you might put that blanket or towel down. First come into all fours, pause for a moment. Do one round of cat-cow. So rounding the spine, opening the back. And then reversing, opening the front of the heart and neutralize. Now, turn the fingertips towards you and the heels of the hands away 
and we'll do that again. You can round as much as feels okay. This will increase what you're feeling here, especially because you've been holding weights. And then reverse that rotate or that um, stretch and come back to neutral. Sit back on your heels or on your sitting bones and just shake the arms out a little bit. Still making sure we've got some blood flow, but we're loosening it all up a little bit more. Roll the shoulders back and down a few times. And then we'll go into the calf muscles. So <clears throat> move your blanket and grab, you can probably do either one heavier weight held here or here, or you can do two to the side. So you choose, I'm gonna do, uh, we'll just do two tens here. Again, I might do it like this or like this, okay? And separate your feet to sitting bone distance or a little wider. And we're just gonna do a lift and a lower, slow and steady. So I don't want you to be speedy with this one. Lifting and lowering. Now you can do all of these workouts in your shoes or you can do them bare feet. I kind of like to do work in bare feet because it helps build the muscles oops, that we don't often use when our feet are just kind of cramped in shoes all day. But I totally understand if that's just a better um, thing for you to do. All right, keep going. Again, we're back in that posterior chain. Um, a lot of times with working out, we think core, core, and we think it's all like right here. No, <laughs> it's our whole torso, pelvic floor, all of that. And then strengthening those glutes, hamstrings, calf muscles. I say calves, but this is doing much more than calves as you can probably feel the burning. We're gonna go up for a hold. So lift your heels high, hold. Hug the midline really gently with the inner thighs, those adductors. And we're gonna hold until it feels like we're really getting a good, good burn. And then we're gonna lower incrementally. So from here, lower one fourth of the way down with the heels. <laughs> okay, whoop, lower another fourth. All right, almost all the way down and down. Whoo, slowly, carefully place your weights down. Let's get a stretch for the back of the legs. So kick one heel off to the side, bend the other knee and lean onto that thigh of the bent leg, toes towards you, spread the toes out, reach your hips back and up. Open the back of that leg. And then other side, kick that heel off, bend the knee, stretch those hips up and back. My hip was like click clack, opening there. And then shake it all out, release, okay. So we're gonna come all the way down onto our bellies. If you want to take your blanket or towel and open it, I just wanna make sure that your pelvis and your rib cage are on the same line of height so that you're not teetering forward or back um, by having one part of your body so high up. We'll come down into a prone position, so facing forward. And then you have the option this you don't need weights for. Trust me, you don't need weights. We'll have the option to put some lighter weights. These are fives, um, which are gonna feel like a lot <laughs> alongside of the body. Okay, so first look down at the mat, take the tops of the feet down, spread the toes, and just lift your head and put your shoulder blades onto your back. Reach the fingertips away from you, but keep the hands down on the ground. And we'll just start to wake up the musculature of the back here. Breathing. Now, from here, you can stay with that, or you can start to lift and lower the hands. If you want to do that with your weights, you're going to lift and lower. So these are long levers. These arms are long levers. So the weight feels about 30 times as heavy uh, when you're doing it like this. Big time into the back and triceps here. If you started to lift and lower the weight and it's just too much, put the weights down, and continue with the arms here. And I'll almost feel like at that point that they're floating up like with helium because of the work that you were doing with the weights. And then three, two, one, hold, and down. Create a little pillow with your arms. Ooh, feels like my triceps are getting a little, 
little stretch there. And then either one head, one head, one of your heads, one side of your head down or forehead, breathe. I'm not coming all the way down because the, the microphone is gonna pick up too much of my voice. And then hands alongside of the chest, elbows draw back, shoulder blades onto the back. Tuck your toes, draw your organs towards your spine, press your knees down, lift your pelvis about maybe an inch, and then press to all fours. Stretch it back into that child's pose that we started with, really opening again that rotation of that rib cage, one side to the floor, other side to the floor. Downward facing dog for your breathing, soften your neck. This time, walk your hands back to your feet, bend the knees any amount. Have those lighter weights handy, please. We're still gonna work with those. Move your prop away, and then grab your weights alongside of your feet, and we're gonna do a real slow movement to stand. So find, you're hinging your hips back, and then slower than molasses, we're gonna transition to standing, holding on to those weights. The brain is gonna want you to go faster. Slow down. All the way to standing. Okay, so I'm gonna face you and I'm gonna show you what this looks like. You're gonna take your weights. By the way, if your arms are real tuckered out right now, do no weights and let this be more of a mobility movement um, or choose a lighter weight. Underside of your forearms, facing forward. And then taking a big circle until the arms come up. Now, maybe the weights came to touching, maybe they didn't, and slowly control it all the way back to where you started. Maybe the weights touch, okay? That's um, gonna mean that you need a little more flexibility for that, and then when they're coming up here, unless you're looking up, it's sometimes hard to know where they're gonna touch. What, the one thing I will say about this, even with five pounds, is that it's very hard. Again, these are long levers we're working with, so the further away the weight is from you, the harder that is to hold for a longer period of time. What I do wanna say is, keep going, is that I don't want you to do this. Pelvis forward, hinging the front of the hips forward, okay? So I don't want you to collapse at the lumbar. Stay with it. And breathe. This is good for so many, all through the core, shoulders, arms, and this is not a movement we do very often. Again, building those neuro pathways in new ways through our brain. New movement, so important for us. All right, we're gonna do one more, and then we will change it up and do a little rotator cuff work. Okay. Soften it down, shake it out. Do that really like technical shimmy that everyone learns in gym class. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> all right, half bicep curl, please. Decently light weights, I mean under 10. And then 90 degree bend in the elbows. Keep the elbows towards you and open the forearms out to the sides any amount. Now you can come in and just touch the weights or come close. You can even cross the midline a little bit here and then alternate the crossing, which one goes on top. For me, if you're using big weights, don't do a cross because it's gonna cause you to try to shift one higher than the other. So for most of us, just touching the weights or coming closer is fine. And you'll really start to feel that back work as you press back. Ooh, so, so good. Front of the shoulders, everything. Biceps, of course, you're in a contraction in the biceps and nice shoulders over pelvis, over feet. And then we'll go into an open hold with a little baby pulse, little baby pulse. Not too fast. <laughs> Again, we're working everything over the kitchen sink today, so if you're feeling new things happening even in your back right now, that's on purpose. <laughs> and then this is gonna be really weird. We're gonna slowly unfurl here Oh, that's weird. Yes, good, you're doing it right. And then rotate your weights back towards you, underside of the forearms towards you, and breathe. We're going back to the posterior chain, a little more leg work. Heavier weights. This can be done 
even with something like a 20 pound kettlebell, okay? So it can be, it's one weight or two weights. Either you have one in each hand or one in both hands. You're gonna step one foot forward, the other leg comes back like a little kickstand behind you and the heel is lifted. There's a tiny hinge at the hip and a bend in the knee that's small and there's a lowering and a lifting. Now, when I come up, notice I'm not straightening my leg or hinging my pelvis forward. I am keeping this basic position the whole time. There's always a little bend in my knee and I have a pitch forward slightly of my torso even when I come all the way up because we're isolating the back of whichever leg is forward. You'll probably feel this in your back as well. Um, you wanna feel some work, of course, sometimes in your lum lumbar zone, in your low back, but you don't wanna be collapsed so that you're lagging there and sagging. Breathing here always and slow it down. You can even decrease the range of movement here if that's better for you. I know this is a big one. It's a lot harder for most of us when we do the split leg of this version rather than the dual leg, okay? Speaking of, <laughs> let's switch sides. Split leg, other side. Get your form right, slight hinge at the hips, Bent back knee, slightly bent front leg. Lifting and lowering. If this is too much, please do just take both feet parallel and do the same movement without the split leg positioning. And do it with lighter weight even, or no weight. So I can work my balance and I can work my leg here very nicely with no weight whatsoever. Okay, so the weight is really optional. Three more. Two. One, I'm gonna feel these tomorrow. I don't know about you. And weight comes down. Bend your knees, find a nice flat back. Pause here for a moment. Neutralize that spine. Leave the weight behind, bring your hands to your thighs. Hinge up for a chair pose with the hands on the thighs. And then do a little tiny tilt of the pelvis under and back. Don't go to full range, little tiny. Pause where you're not overreaching or over tucked right in the middle and then just stand all the way up and shake that out. You might wanna roll the toes back and press the ankles forward, kinda of roll around a little bit there. And wherever you feel it, so you're probably feeling it in your back a lot. When you wake up in the next two days and you feel your lower back hurting, that is going to be usually a work type of hurt versus an injury type of hurt. So it's okay to work this area, but sometimes we're scared of having sensation there because it feels like an injury, but really it's we're working, okay? Which is so good for us. Okay, so we've been working that posterior chain a lot. Let's go anterior. Come on down to seated and make sure that whatever you're sitting on offers some tailbone padding, and you're not way high up on something like this that you could fall off of. Okay, you choose the amount of weight. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do, and it is a held weight, tiny, tiny baby movement here, slower though, okay? Heels lifted, I mean, excuse me, heels down, toes lifted. So for me, I'm gonna start with a five because I wanna make sure my low back feels okay with that. And I'm just going to train track my legs in alignment, elbows bend in, and I'm just gonna lift and lower, working through the core. Hinging back, hinging up, hinging back, hinging up. Now that I feel that that's pretty okay, I'm gonna move to a 12, and I'm gonna continue with that. And we have options to add on. All right, if you wanna get more in the back and into the lats and into the shoulders, when you come up, you're gonna press, okay? So it's a lean back, lean forward, 
press and down. Lean back, lean forward, press and down. Okay, so that's the movement. You can continue just going up and down here, or it kind of becomes instead of two movements, up and down, it's three. Up, down, back, and forward. All right, if you want even more and your low back is feeling great, then you're going to lift one shin parallel to the floor and decrease your range of leaning back movement. Whew, I told you, everything but the kitchen sink. Quads are on fire, core, shoulders. All right, if one leg is up, switch sides. You can do most anything for a short period of time, I promise. The brain wants to quit before the body actually needs to. Of course, listen to your body. But if it's just that you haven't been to this level of strength before, don't think you can't go there. Two. One. And foot down. Cross-legged position, lower your block, shake the arms out. Okay, you can move, block. Yes, this is a block of weight. Feet down, I've been teaching yoga for almost 21 years. It's ingrained to call everything a block. Even my head, block head. Shoulders roll back, lift your heart. And hands on the knees, round the spine, open the back door of the heart. Stretch that open. Inhale, roll up. Exhale, round back. And come all the way to seated and walk any amount into a reaching arms forward. Maybe it's just a hinge at the hips. We just wanna kind of open the hips and work a little stretch into the spine and the back. Breathing here. And as we started, well, we've gotta do both sides. So cross in the other direction. Move the flesh of the sitting bones back if you need to. Maybe a little hinge, maybe a walk, but not a maybe on the breath. <laughs> the breath is a must. And walk it all the way back up. One of the final things that we'll do is on the knees. Now, this can be done on the hands and knees or forearms and knees. So you choose what feels best. If your wrists are a little tender, let's choose the forearms. The other thing you get to choose is if this has a weight or not. The weight would go behind your left knee to work, again, the glutes and the hamstrings, or you can do this without the weight at all. If you are on the forearms or the hands, especially the forearms, make sure you're not collapsing here. So we need support of drawing the organs towards the spine. So with or without the weight, you kind of have to get it into that crease right behind the knees. And then it helps if you have pants on. Um, if it hurts you or anything, because you don't, maybe you have shorts on, then skip the weight. Or use something softer. And then from here, draw your right knee a little more underneath you, and then lift your left knee up. Um, it's gonna feel like it's hip height, it's probably a little lower, don't worry about it. Roll, again, that left side, not to the side, but a little more parallel to the floor through the torso, and we'll do a very small range of movement with a lift and a lower. So my glutes are one of my least favorite places to work, but um, probably a place that I need the most work. <laughs> All right, so, you can do this, like I said, on your forearms without collapsing the low back. Little lift, little lower. You're engaging at the ankle. And of course, you're also working the other, the other leg, the knee that's down, you're working that leg too. Breathe. And then from here, you can stay and hold here. If you wanna do a sideways movement, I should have taken the knees together first. Take the knees together and then out to the side. Straight out opening and working the external rotators. This is a doozy. If it's too much, get rid of that uh, weight. And you can try it on your hands and knees versus the forearms and see which one works better. I find it easier on the hands. And opening to that side position. Two more. 
Last one, hold if you can, and back down. Remove the weight and choose either a child's pose or a downward dog, and you have an option on those to cross one leg in front of the other and reach back, or one knee in front of the other for more of a gomukhasana legs if you're familiar with yoga and reach back, that might get into the hips a little bit more. And then whichever leg you have crossed in front, whether you're in the downward dog or the child's pose with the gomukhasana, cross the other leg in front. That'll help stretch out <laughs> those glutes. Wow, uh, the side. All right, let's get this over with. If you're using the weight, <laughs> take it behind the right knee. Forearms or hands. Stabilize through the core, lift the leg up, engage at the ankle, and very small range of movement. So I wanna take momentum out of this and find more of that, again, focus on form, and lift and lower, really working into those glutes, getting so nice and strong, protecting our hips, and just giving us the ability to be more resilient through strength and flexibility of those larger joints. So it's easy to hold your breath when you're working out, especially with weights. So let's make sure to keep that thread of breath happening through. And again, if you wanna try forearms, you can try the forearms. That will change also the work in the shoulders for sure, even the pec muscles. Are we there yet? <laughs> Three, two, one, and then bring the knees together. And any amount of a slow sideways movement from knee out to the side. And it doesn't have to be a big sideways lift, okay? You'll feel when you do that, you have to really work the core. I feel even my obliques engaging to take that sideways movement on and stay stable. Three, two, one. Oh, we've got to hold, hold. This is what me and my friend Vanessa called peeing, peeing dog asana. Asana means, you know, just yoga pose and release it. Um, but yeah, very beautiful, the most beautiful pose in yoga. Downward dog with option to cross or child's pose with option to cross one leg in front of the other. Breathing, opportunity to let the contents of the heart spill out into the mind, breathing here. So we wanna take care of ourselves on all the layers. That starts with the breath. Other leg in front, whether that's in your downward dog, or in that Gomukhasana child's pose variation. All right, come on up and roll your blanket or your towel. Have that handy about three quarters of the way down your mat. Feet go over it, hug your knees in. Rock side to side. Please do not skip the stretching part. You burn Something like, I mean, I've heard different schools of thought, but 25% more calories or something with adding stretching into your routine. I don't know if it's that much, but you do burn more and it's so good for the body. Whew. And just, I'm not gonna get into it, just trust me. Cross one ankle to the top of the other knee. Arm goes through the little triangle you made in the middle, interlace on the front of the knee or behind. And let's rock side to side or circle because those glutes, those um, external rotators really did a lot of work for us today. And the other direction if you're circling. And then draw in, hold, press the leg that's in front of you away from you and the leg that's away from you towards you. Reduce any cramping or gripping around the jaw or the neck. And then unwind and cross the other way. You can add that gentle movement here. Let that nervous system soften. And then hug in. The leg that's close to you presses away. The leg that's away from you draws in. Breathing. Breathing. 
and unwind. From here, soles of the feet down on the other side of your blanket, and just a little baby press into the feet, little lift of the hips. Don't go to your highest height. We're just opening the front of the hips a little bit, little bit of a back bend, inhale. Exhale, follow the exhale all the way down with the hips. If there is any other movement, twisting, or anything you want to do before you find your final relaxation, feel free to just pause it if you want to come here and take a twist. That might be easier without your, your blanket in the way. Um, sometimes the blankets can be utilized for a different lift of the pelvis. But I'm not explaining all that <laughs> right now. Um, you can do that. And if you're ready for final relaxation, hands can go wherever you want. If you want to open the chest a little bit more, pectorals getting a stretch, you might go more for an open arm uh, position. Palms could be up closer to above the head. And let your bones settle. And let the muscles lay over the bones, just draping them and settling down. Close your eyes, go with the breathing. So, <clears throat> you had to do a lot of focusing, a lot of stabilization. And here, please give yourself permission to release all of that away so that you can balance. We all want balance, right? You need to balance the work, balance the effort with the ease and the letting go. If all we know how to do is work, <laughs> we don't live as fully um, or as connected or as sweetly as we, as we can. Um, and I think when we don't do the softening parts and the releasing parts, I find that I'm not as good of a listener. I don't take things in as well um, when I'm just in that kind of efforting. So may we all find balance. Thank you so much for working your arms and your legs and everything else. <laughs> I really appreciate that you chose Lizzie Brett's Yoga and Fitness. If you found any value to this video or any of my videos, please do take a moment and hit like and do subscribe um, and leave me a comment. What is it that you want uh, me to do a video about? I am here for you. Thank you for being here for me. And I hope you have a beautiful day. I probably already said that. Go take care of yourself and take care of those who you love. Namaste.